So friction star welding is basically a solid state joining process which was invented at the Welding Institute in UK around 1991. And you know this is also a thermomechanical process as we are going to see later on because there is a lot of heating that occurs and there is uh, severe plastic deformation that goes into the workpiece. So from that sense, this can also be categorized as a thermomechanical process and the heat basically comes from the frictional heat and the heat input to the workpiece depends on the ratio of cool rotation speed to the driver speed. Okay? And you know the why it is used as a joining technique because there are certain advantages especially for aluminum and aluminum alloys which are difficult to join by conventional fusion welding techniques which uh, suffer from many issues such as you know uh, hot cracking, tearing and also change in composition during the welding process and so on. So all those things can be overcome by this uh, FSW process because this occurs in solid state. So there is no liquid involved here. So all those issues associated with the liquid in fusion welding process can be overcome by this particular technique. And it also offers you a combination of material flow and stirring, extrusion, forging, which uh, leads to a refinement into the cast microstructure. So as I said, you know, it also refines the microstructure, it modifies the microstructure. For example, it can eliminate segregation and porosity and if there are any secondary phases, it can actually uniformly distribute those phases. So these are some of the aspects you know which are very important for this process and some of these we are going to see as part of this lecture. So when you talk about the process as such as to how does the process work, what is the working principle behind it. This is a very simple process in the sense that it basically uses a non-consumable tool which you can see over here. Let me use a pointer. Right, so this is the tool which has a pin and a solder. So the actual picture of the tool can be seen over here. So here you can see a small pin and then you have a concave shoulder. Okay. So this pin is actually plunged into the workpiece, the workpiece, the plates which are to be joined, and then it is rotated at high speed, and at the same time a vertical load is applied. And then once uh, the frictional heat softens the material, then the tool is moved forward at a particular travel speed, right? So that is how you know you join these uh, two plates along this uh, joint line, okay? And there are two sides here written as advancing and retreating side, as you could see. So the advancing side is the one where the tangential velocity of the tool surface is parallel to the traverse direction. So in this case, since the tool is rotating anti-clockwise, uh, this would be the advancing side and the other side is the retreating side. Okay? So as I mentioned, the material would soften due to the frictional heat and when you move the tool forward, it will actually join the material and the heat input to the workpiece depends on the ratio of the rotational speed to the travel speed, omega by V ratio as we call it. And here since there is a stirring action due to this rotation and the deformation that happens, there is material flow and mixing which is again beneficial for modifying and refining the microstructure. So this is how the machine looks like. Basically, it has this uh, spindle which uh, rotates the tool. So here is the tool which is fitted into this uh, spindle and then this goes into the motor drive which is connected to a control system through which this can be rotated at uh, controlled uh, RPM. And you can also control the travel speed uh, through the control system that is connected to the system. Okay. 
So you could uh, see that there is a workpiece over here. There are two plates in uh, butt joint uh, configuration and then the tool goes down and as I said, the pin will plunge into the workpiece and then this uh, tool will be rotated okay, at high speed and once the material softens, we provide certain dwell time for that once the pin is plunged into the workpiece. Once the material softens due to the heat, it moves forward at a particular travel speed and the joining would take place. Something that you can see from this embedded video over here, if I could show that to you. Okay, so the tool rotates and then it goes into the workpiece, then it that pin plunges into it, and then as I said, we provide some dwell time for the material to soften. And once it is soft enough, the tool is traversed in this direction. So you can see that the joining is taking place right now and the tool is moving forward so here simultaneously a vertical load is also being applied from top Now it has almost uh, reached the end, so it is uh, lifted, the tool is lifted and you can see the track, the welding track here, which has come up, okay. Yeah, so that is the welding process as to how this whole process works, okay. Now, Talking about the process parameters, the two most important process parameters in this technique are the tool rotation speed and the traverse speed. And as I said, the heat input itself depends on the ratio of these two parameters. Okay? If these two parameters are not optimized properly for a given material, then you would end up with defective welds. So defects like tunnel hole, for example, can be seen if you do not use optimized process parameters. So this kind of defects can be found in the weld. And even if you do not find such defects, you know, which are uh, something like this, which can be easily identified once you observe it under a microscope. Even if such defects are not there, you could also find some microstructural defect. Although apparently this may not look like a defect, like the tunnel hole, but uh, you know, there is some issue with the bonding here, which will come up as a different contrast, which you could see probably along these lines over here, right? So that is why it is important to optimize these two parameters beforehand, before you actually start joining the material. And the other process parameters could be the vertical load, which is applied the plunge depth and the tool geometry also has been found to have an effect on the quality of the joint or if you have some materials which are stronger and difficult to join then you may have to modify the geometry of the tool. So these are different tool geometries which are used for this process. You have this uh, simple cylindrical tool for example over here you know. So this is uh, very commonly used uh, for many materials. And as I said, if you have a material which is uh, found to be stronger or which is found to be difficult to join, then uh, this uh, tool geometry is modified in terms of introducing some features in the tool pin and the shoulder. For example, you can see a scrolled shoulder over here and also a threaded pin, right? And then you can also have this kind of tri float on the pin, which is uh, beneficial for better material flow. And when you have such uh, features on the tool, you have better material flow because the dynamic to static volume ratio, that is the swept volume to the pin volume, the material being swept by the pin 
and the volume of the pin itself the ratio of these two that is the dynamic to the static volume ratio increases when you have some features on the tool. So, for simple cylindrical pin this is one that means the volume of the material which is being swept by the pin is equal to the pin volume itself. But if you have certain features for example, the tri float pin you, your ratio increases from 1 to 2.6. So, that helps you in better material flow and mixing and therefore, if you have materials which are stronger this kind of uh, tool can be very handy tools having certain features on the solder and the pin. And the other thing that you should notice here is the fact that the solder is not flat, but it is bit concave and that is provided that uh, concavity is provided to ensure that the softened material is confined. When the material is plasticized, you know it is deforming under a vertical load to confine that material so that it does not squeeze out from this uh, shoulder, this uh, shoulder is made concave so that the plasticized material is totally confined under the tool and the joining occurs without any squeezing out of the softened material. Okay. There are different microstructural zones that you can find in the weld. If you move from the weld that is the center of the weld which is also known as the stir zone towards the base metal you would find two other zones in terms of you know a different microstructure. So, here zone A is the stir zone the weld nugget that we have that is also known as the star zone here. So, this is the zone which uh, experiences the maximum strain and temperature and therefore, it undergoes recrystallization. And next to it you have another zone uh, consisting of B and C which is known as thermomechanically affected zone or TMAZ. This uh, zone experiences relatively less temperature compared to the star zone. So, here there is no recrystallization as such, but there is still some deformation and uh, heat input higher temperature because of that it goes through dynamic recovery. And next to it there is heat affected zone, which is the zone that is affected by the heat or the thermal cycle. So, here because of the thermal cycles so the grains are larger due to grain growth. Okay. So, these are the different microstructural zones that one can find in a friction star weld. So, I hope with this lecture you have got some basic idea about the friction star welding process and how does it work. If you want to know more about it, keep watching for other videos. Thank you for your time and attention.